You know, that's it. Mm. Mm. Was it 20 minutes or what? <laughs> it's like 70 slides. By the time you teach us all to dance, it'll be like, <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> I guess I could talk more about some of those places. This is good. I mean, I, I'm all surprised right. I got through it that fast. Is the base operational? Oh, very close. Like, like I said, very close there. It's at that moment where it's, the transition is about to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry about that. I yeah. had a subtle yeah. interruption. What's the purpose of the submarine? <laughs> huh? What's the purpose of the submarine? I mean, what's within that? Is it all? Uh, there are all types of submarines, but yeah, they're making them big enough for U.S. Uh, submarines to dock there. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But is the purpose of it for war uh, preparation or um, defensive, or what's the purpose of it? Officially, what, what are they saying? What is the oh, they're saying that this is to help uh, keep the waterways open. Uh, they're right. They're like the waterways are like major uh, people. The global economy couldn't work without the waterways. But who gets it? Why are we the ones who get to control it? And uh, and we also say that they're telling their people that it's protecting them from North Korea's navy. Like, say what? I mean, like, look, North Korea's not anywhere close to these folks. <laughs> they got pea shooters compared to what the... Right, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's, well, it's the same purpose we have every military base. Well, so uh, does the submarine just keep surrounding the island to make sure that there's no other uh, interference coming from the outside? Is that the purpose of the submarine? You know, I don't believe I could give you a tactical reason why they would station submarines okay. in, the, uh, in those oceans. But you know what? I bet dimes to dollars they got reasons, and I bet there's uh, submarines there. And I think they say it makes us safer. It ain't that much more complicated. And then if you can make them, you make them. I mean, that's the arms race. Yeah, it seems like if you have all those defense weapons on those naval boats and all that, you wouldn't need the submarine to be going around as well. But unless it you is some... The, you understand radar. the industrial military industrial complex, they create their own inner... Uh, uh, people, there's a whole industry of people, submarine, who would definitely disagree with you and tell you that there, we need the submarine fleet, just like we need those B-52 bombers, just like we need the aircraft carriers. Just I mean, this is the, we have a giant, giant military budget that only reflects empire. To say otherwise is not to be honest with ourselves. Yes. Great. Um, when you were there. I think it was really interesting to see the what the local people are doing and how you know they were integrated with with your witness as well. And um, one of the things I know about Jeju is that it's it's biologically uh, unique in the area, and um, you know in terms of what it has environmentally and and otherwise culturally, it's protected um, through UNESCO and, and other kinds of international bodies. In that sense, considered the Peace Island. Were there other international people there when you were there who are aware of this and also working out of their own country or their own area to bring awareness? Well, what, what the Jeju uh, now folks are doing now that their mission to stop the base right, isn't going to happen, now, yeah. they're, uh, uh, along with the Catholic uh, uh, Church, uh, they're thinking long haul how to, how to address the peace issue. Right. And they're moving to language like disarmament, disarm the island. And they're uh, making, doing, uh, working with uh, the uh, uh, island of Okinawa and Taiwan. And these three islands uh, uh, are, are significant military, U.S. military bases that they want to demilitarize as, as a first step to demilitarization. So they're working in those, those types, organizational ones. Connecting regionally. Right. Right. And the Catholic uh, uh, Church has built a four-story building in Jeju uh, uh, Village, which is disappearing uh, as we speak. Uh, and it's their a permanent social justice building to work on peace as their sign of commitment. Father Moon helped raise the money and the bishop uh, signed on to give it credibility. So there's a commitment, there's a Catholic commitment to this thing and I Again, that's why I think it's really important for people in my movement, the Catholic Worker Movement, uh, to go. Because uh, 
how often do you have a bishop that not only speaks peace, then backs it up with his priest? And they're working in conjunction with local indigenous uh, South Korean peace people. Very good stuff. Mostly women. Not much different here. Yeah. Do they plan to continue to do this for uh, indefinite? Or? Father Moon says he's not going to quit till they, uh, they carry him away. I don't know, he's 86, so maybe he can get away with saying that. Uh, no, they plan on, that's right, they plan on making this a flashpoint. They're, 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 uh, the rock is gone. Uh, and one of them, and they feel that deeply. And they want to keep its memory going. And, uh, and the village itself will be pretty much gone too, by any standards. I mean, they can move in 7,000 Buddhist monks into dormitories in that space, and it will still change a village of 1,500 people just by the, de just by the ec economics of trying to get bars, restaurants, property. A village of 1,500 is pretty much... In the Jeju Island scene there, it's, it's all urban. I mean, it's village to village to village. I mean, there's a lot of... Along the coast, there isn't a lot of farmland. It's up in the uh, center where the island and the village... Uh, up on the hill, uh, that's where uh, you'll find more farmland and open spaces. Yes. Any questions? Oh. And, and what? And what are your, in terms of Frank? What you know? What What would you like to see the contribution of the Catholic <coughs> worker and, and other groups moving forward? Um, you know, to support the effort. Like, what are your kind of? Well, I I think we 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 go there to be with the people who are there daily. It's just a solidarity witness. And then there's a lot of other opportunities the island affords somebody. Because the local peace people are very uh, divergent. They're artsy, they're fartsy, they like to do a lot of gardening, they have the same kind of uh, progressive issues and, and concerns that we have. Uh, really, really worth, really worth being with. So, and so raising money and then sending people... Just raising money to go and just be yeah. solid. It's a cheap thing. I mean, you've got to sure. buy the chicken. That's about $1,500. Uh, but we're figuring out no more than $500 a month for a room and board and expenses. Because that's kind of what Jess and I did work, lived on. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, are, were there uh, Buddhists and those of other religions also taking part? Yes. Yes, there are. Uh, but at this point, those sustaining the daily presence are the Catholics and the peace uh, activists. But at least there's a presence there of others. Yes. I don't understand uh, the orange thing. Could you explain that a little bit? What's happening in the U.S. is sending it. Prior to the 1990s, they had an agricultural system that was not much more further along than we, ours were in the 1950s. Right. Okay? So they had people on the land, small, they, had, they, they, they fed themselves. Then this thing, the global market, dumping uh, 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 cheap uh, uh, rural commodities into their market, destroy oh. their farmers. Okay. Then the people who came back specialized in fruit and oranges. And now all those greenhouses, a lot of them grow oranges or different types of fruit. It's a specialized commercial, it's a one step up than what they were in the 90s prior to that. And it's, and it's in there, it's, a, it's, it's a not a poor, it's not a poor industry, but there aren't as many farmers as there used to be. That's mm -hmm. Same way yeah, it is here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but all the work is now going to be done with the tourist industry. That's where all the jobs are going to come in. And, it's all and all the problems that go with it. Of course. Well, try a military base, too. Uh, what, I, what I found about Korea is that the, uh, yet again, I, and, uh, uh, another country that has suffered grievously uh, because of its associating with us, in the, in the post-World War II era, where uh, these ideologies of communism and capitalism, now it's really just competing capitalist uh, countries and nationalism, Korea has suffered. Uh, uh, the, the whole Korean War, four million Koreans were killed. Uh, look at this, uh, this thing here, this, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, little, uh, uh, see that? See that DMZ? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is how it was. And Seoul is real close to DMZ. 
This is how it was explained to me. In 1954, when the Russians uh, backed uh, uh, North Koreans, invaded, started the uh, fight, they overran uh, Seoul and almost almost overran the island. Then the U.S. came in with the uh, United Nations and they fought them back over to Seoul, back past the DMZ, almost to the Chinese border. And then the Chinese came in and they, they took everybody back over the DMZ, back over Seoul, and almost took over the whole area. And then the U.S. decided to bomb the hell out of everybody. In which they bombed every known building in North Korea. That's all they could go. And then they started just bombing more stuff, lifting up the dust, uh, and managed to fight them back over to Seoul and get to the DMZ. And they're... It's a cessation of firing. There was never a peace accord. Uh, no the, treaty, nothing. No treaty, no nothing. The deal is, as far as the U.S. Uh, and South Korean's army is, we use whatever they got anytime we want when we call it an emergency, and we can do anything we want. So they're a client state of ours. Uh, and that was four million people. And that was because... Uh, well, the history of the Jeju people is they rebelled because the U.S., when they came in, uh, uh, sided with the collaborators, uh, the Japanese collaborators and the capitalists uh, uh, on the mainland Korea who were friendly with the Japanese occupiers. Uh, and, uh, and then they built this whole anti-communist bullshit just because it's our Cold War thing and the Koreans got caught in the middle of it. It's interesting to note too that geopolitically Korea um, had never been um, an aggressor in their history. So, uh, you know, you take a look at what, what they're between there um, and the, the cultures they you know, different aspects of them have intermixed over the years, but they have their own distinctive culture. And um, so, you know, being caught in the middle, that's what reminded me of that. But some of you might have noticed that those slides that Frank had and thought it was interesting about the, the police physically removing the, um, those holding a vigil. And one of the things that's interesting, and maybe Frank can speak to this, because they're right on the land where the naval base is, but the police role um, typically is not one like what we hear of or, or see here. First of all, they're not walking around carrying guns and you know, being the aggressor in that sense. And so um, they're just politely, and I don't know that they roughed anyone up, it doesn't sound like it, going through the motions of this day in and day out and not arresting people. So I don't know what agreement necessarily they have going, but I do know that the, the way that police are viewed there uh, culturally is very different from how we might, might view that here. You know, being removed by the police physically three times a day might not be something you'd want want to have happen here in, in the United States, but you want to speak to any well, of that, Frank? Uh, they, they were, the, 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 the police are on a short leash. They weren't always on a short leash. Uh, at the height of this campaign, it was a 24-7 occupation of the peace people. And the police, by if there were hundreds of, of demonstrators, there were thousands of police. Lots of money being poured into this political scene. And uh, 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 up until uh, the last couple of years, the directive for the police was to uh, just clear it and make sure that... Uh, uh, the uh, 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 traffic flows, clear it. So they had no. So they throw people off. They didn't care about the. How, they, there was no. They weren't supposed to kill anybody, but their first priority wasn't to protect people. The first priority was to clear it and do it bodily uh, and with no arrest. Uh, so it was a physical pitch battle with hundreds of people. That's what made the TV news and stuff like that. Uh, and then they. Uh, uh, the new president came in, and she said, give them prayer, prison sentences. So they started giving them prison sentences, and then they had to do months and years in jails, and you know what? They ran out of people who wanted to get arrested. Uh, those things happened. And it broke the heart, because while this was all happening, the base was getting built anyway. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, 
the from a 24-hour, 24-7, lots of different groups all over happening. There's only two presents, the one I just said, very confined, and it's with a Catholic Mass. Now, what I've discovered about Korea is the Catholic Mass means something different to them politically than it does here. Because in the 1980s, when that priest went to solitary confinement, Catholics joined them, and the priest joined them, the Red of Priest joined them, and they celebrated Mass as a political statement. And because of that, celebrating Mass anywhere is not illegal, and no one should interfere with it. I don't know how that happened, but if you're a priest, uh, and you're in Korea, and you want to celebrate a Mass as a protest, everybody's going to let you do it. Now they may arrest you afterwards, they may arrest you before. But if you're celebrating Mass, that whole scene is like, Catholic Mass, let them do it. That's what's going on. That's what was won in a cultural sense. And that's what's being played out. Because they don't, and they don't, they know when they arrest priests and nuns, it gets more visibility. But it's all been down to two short things. It's, uh, and we do stop the traffic, but it just keeps flowing. And it's built. So it's, it's and the government's hoping the protesters quit and disappear. Uh, and then they can go on with their business. That's where we're at right now. Yeah. The government of Jeju Island? The, no, the central government. And Seoul. South, Seoul. South. And the South, South, South Korea, the central government is everything. The state government has no power at all. They, they don't get to set a budget or anything. All they get to do is spend what the central government tells them they're going to get. Which lends itself to corporatism. And... Uh, this is the uh, company that owns South Korea, Samsung. Yeah. Yep. And this happens to be a Samsung phone, by the way. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> there you have it, baby. <laughs> They're everywhere. And it's Chinese money. And we're building a forward military base to contain China. Yeah, go figure. Yeah, go figure. It's all crazy. Unsustainable, and I think that that was the I said it was unsustainable. There was a an American couple visiting their daughter. We were going out for a cut and lunch or something. I was telling them what's going on here. I said, "The whole damn thing's so unsustainable." And he says to me, "Well, why do you say that?" And then I looked at him because what we're doing it back home is unsustainable. I don't think what we're doing here in Iowa is unsustainable. I don't think the way we're, we're farming, how we're treating the land. This whole system is, is rigged, uh, and it's all bad for the planet right now. Yeah. Hey, so how long did that last, that, that, that talk? Like 20 minutes? Was it longer than that? Kind of been longer than that. Now I've got to talk. Was it all right? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, good. Think about that. Think about that. Yeah. All right, well then, hey, good. Oh, and, uh, and uh, if we want to make out checks, we'll be, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, you can make out checks to uh, the uh, uh, the Des Moines. If you want a tax uh, thing, then you can uh, Des Moines vets uh, for peace, uh, or you can just write it out to, to the Bergen House and say for Jeju. Okay. Because uh, I, I appreciate whatever you can give, but uh, so we can do vets for peace and then put Jeju. Jeju to for Jeju because there's a okay. uh, uh, yeah, you can do it either way. You're a good alternative to the Republican debate. Uh, <laughs> so the yeah. slides went all right. I didn't oh, yeah. Move fast. Oh, and no, had us, no, you no, got to help no. together, yeah. did our right narrative. Yeah. All right, yeah. that's great. Yeah. I put hours into this thing. But Frank, you yeah. want to tell a little bit about one of the, at least a couple of people you want to send or you identify? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. We got Martha Hennessy. We've had Martha Hennessy here. Yeah. 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 The yeah. granddaughter uh, uh, of Dorothy Day. And then uh, Tony Flynn. Uh, who's uh, uh, in her mid 60s and has been at the Catholic Worker, the LA and, and uh, California Workers. Uh, she's an author. She wants to go. And then uh, Christy Kershek is a Catholic Worker out of the St. Louis area. So I have three uh, well known Catholic Worker women from uh, all over the country. Uh, and I'm hoping to uh, uh, help them get there and, and then start kind of a buzz in the movement to get people to go. And more or less, people could go on their own. I mean, you, you get a group of people, you raise two thousand dollars, you send somebody. That's that's the uh, that's the plan, and and establish a relationship with the uh, the people that 
especially the Catholic problem. Where did you stay? I stayed. Uh, there was a uh, there was a communal di uh, restaurant right, uh, built right next to the base, and there's these uh, box like a, a, a trailer box or some kind of a shipping shipping like container. a shipping container. Like a container. I stayed in. A, me and Jeff stayed in a nice little container. <laughs> uh, we had our own little container. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a shared bathroom and laundry and all this stuff. We had our own container though. That was mm -hmm. nice. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and they'll yeah. If you go, they'll provide people. Somebody will put you in, give you in. You'll meet, uh, uh, and that's yeah. How was the food, Frank? I'm just curious. Not good. Uh, it was hot, real hot. Spicy yeah. hot. They were uh, yeah. Yeah, Korea, Yeah, kimchi. Kimchi right. is kimchi, very very you know, spicy. Like, you know, I thought kimchi like there's one kimchi. There's like 247 different types of kimchi. Yeah, it's just like the Mexican mole. There's so many different types of mole. Mexican Mexican means nothing to them. It'd be like lollipop, sugar candy. It's hot. But yeah, I made that as a reference to number of types. You know, there's so many different types of mole. There's so many different types of kimchi. Yeah. It's crazy. And yeah. Frank, what if somebody knows of somebody who might want to host a house party or, you know, something like that? They just get a hold of you and you'll work Yeah, I in. can do this. This is, uh, once you get it set, you Mobile. can go off and do it. Yeah. More, I'd love to. Thank you. Frank, tell us the background of Gene and Bill Mason being there. Oh, well, you know, it's not all that much of a background. I mean, how I, uh, Bill and Gene are, you know, Bill's well, like two years ago, he discovers J2 and he's He's a fire way. He gets a hold of this video and, and uh, forces us to watch it uh, and, and went around. And, and, of course, when he was starting to do that, I'm looking like, first of all, you're too old to start a new campaign. And, and then, then secondly, it's like, i got too many things on my plate. I just can't possibly add another front. Uh, but he, you know, he went to Korea. He has a real connection with, with that, that, that country. Uh, and, and when he learned about the what the, the Jeju secret was. The, uh, the, uh, that was uh, really something. So, uh, and ironically, uh, 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 he was the one that introduced me to the whole scene. And uh, when Jess and I were thinking about places to go, it was his introduction with uh, uh, stimulated by another a Jesuit priest called Father uh, Bill Bex, who uh, was from the Tacoma Catholic Worker. And he had gone there. And just recently passed away, but was a big fan of Jeju. So both Bill Basinger and this uh, Father Bex, Bex sort of reason I lo looked into it. Yeah. And you know our guest that got bit by the bad bug? Melissa, uh, yes. She was, she was there too. Father yeah, we had, yep. Yeah. With Father Bex. So there are a number of Catholic workers getting out there, so we're just hoping, to, I'm hoping to keep a buzz about the place. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Good job. Yeah. And everyone, there's cookies and lemonade and all kinds of things back there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my uh, string down. But, uh, yeah. You can take some of these back to the workers. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Is there any policy ever to... But, uh, I, I hope that this uh, will help under people understand what is going on with this base at uh, Jeju Island and uh, that the island itself is, could eventually become you know, kick, all the people kicked off the island and it will become a base so they're hoping that that doesn't happen but anyway, I want to thank you for watching and, uh, and keep an eye on Jeju Island. And uh, before I shut my stream down, I would ask you to check out my donation links that are below my video view window if you're watching on Ustream. And, but if you're not, if you're watching through another way, or when I upload this video later on uh, YouTube after I get home, you can go to www.gofundme.com slash Kaylin. That's K-A-Y-L-Y-N-N. Again, www.gofundme.com slash Kaylin. Or you can go to www.paypal.com and then send money to line. Enter the email address S-T-R-A-I-N-S-O-P at AOL.com. 
Again, www.paypal.com. And in this money two line, enter the email address strainsop at aol.com. That will help me cover the cost of my live stream and broadcasting so I can continue to bring you these events live and uh, unedited. Unfortunately, not uncut because I had a, had a little bit of an interruption there. But uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the